First at five, more than 120 evacuees who have been quarantined at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland are now headed to their homes. This afternoon, dozens of the evacuees bus to San Antonio International Airport where they were taking flights to destinations all across the country. Many passengers leaving San Antonio today along with them told our Stephanie Cerna they aren't worried the evacuees might be on their flights. Are you happy to be heading home? Oh, of course. Yeah. The evacuees glad to be headed home after being quarantined for coronavirus at JBSA Lackland. These evacuees have been symptom free for at least 14 days and were bused to San Antonio International Airport and dropped off in the main passenger loading zone. A couple of passengers leaving San Antonio today expressed concern off camera, but most people we talked to say they were not worried to possibly be on the same flight as the evacuees. I only got so much time here anyway, when it's up, it's up. <laughs> I have faith, I'm sorry. I, I don't, I, I'm not gonna be scared because someone got sick and I might get it. I mean, I'm taking the same precautions as I would with anything, with the flu or anything else. Maybe, maybe a little extra hand sanitizer, but that's it. I'm not too worried about it. I believe that uh, they followed the protocol to keep us safe to the best of their ability. So I'm, I'm going with that. Now, the mayor just wrapped up a news conference a little while ago, and we have learned that seven evacuees who have not tested positive for the virus are still under quarantine at JBSA Lackland. Now, it's not clear when they will be released. Now, 11 others who developed symptoms during the quarantine and tested positive for coronavirus, they remain in isolation at the Texas Center for Infectious Disease. We are live at the airport. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Continuing our coverage of the coronavirus in San Antonio, North Star Mall back up and running today. Yeah, the mall temporarily closed yesterday afternoon after a woman who was being tested for the virus released from the Texas Center for Infectious Disease. She ended up visiting North Star Mall, eating at the food court, going to stores before results came back for the third test showing she was positive. That woman is now back in isolation at TCID. The mall was cleaned as a precaution, and again, it is now back open. We also learned today the Archdiocese of San Antonio taking its own measures to keep local parishes and school staff and students safe in regards to COVID-19. The changes include temporarily distributing Holy Communion in the hand rather than on the tongue, temporarily discontinuing the distribution of precious blood at Mass. They're also going to be removing holy water from the founts at the church doors and avoiding physical contact. Also re frequently sanitizing uh, classrooms and tables at Catholic schools. Now the Archdiocese says these are only temporary changes and they will review them at a later date. And taking a look now at the impact the coronavirus has had across the country. Right now, there are more than 100 cases of COVID-19 spread across more than a dozen states. So far, nine people have died in Washington state. More than 90,000 cases have been confirmed around the world, and more than 3,100 cases have resulted in death, most of them in mainland China. We're continuing to monitor the coronavirus and its impact here in San Antonio across the country around the world. You can stay up to date with new information on our website. We also have articles to help you better understand what the virus is, how close scientists are to developing a vaccine and how we got to where we are now. Just go to ksat.com and search coronavirus. In other news, new at five, we have learned the name of a Bear County inmate who died this morning when he hung himself inside his cell. He's now identified as 20 year old Joel Sombrano. Sombrano was in jail on a capital murder charge in connection with the 2018 murder of Roy Ponce, who was killed during a home invasion on Bassey Road. The sheriff's office says Sombrano was found hanging in his cell around six in the morning. A second deputy was called for backup, and despite life-saving measures, he died at the hospital. We now know the name of a motorcyclist killed in a crash on the east side last night. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying him as 64-year-old Kyle Wayne Perry. And right now, police are still looking for the truck driver who killed him. They said the suspect ran off from the crash scene after he jackknifed his flatbed on I-10 East near, Houston, excuse me, near Foster Road about 6.30 last night. Witnesses told police that the driver hit Perry's motorcycle from behind. Perry died at the scene. Three other vehicles were involved. When the suspect is found, he's expected to face multiple charges.
We've also learned the name of a man who was shot and killed by an SAPD officer over the weekend. He's identified as 45-year-old Richard Rodriguez. He was fatally shot at a home on Concio Drive on Sunday. Officers were called to the home over a report of a disturbance. When officers got inside, Rodriguez was standing in the hallway and allegedly pointing a gun at them. Neither of the officers were injured. One of them did fire a shot, and that is what killed Rodriguez. We're just a few hours away from learning which candidates lead the way in the primary election. Delegate Rich Texas among the nation's key races on this Super Tuesday. And this year had so many Democratic presidential contenders that Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar chose to bow out of the race just ahead of today's primary. About 75,000 voters have come out so far just today. And as Jesse DeGuiata reports, some voters were even hoping for a second chance. It's the first for me, and I've been here a while. Having overseen many an election, Bear County Elections Administrator says she's heard about voters who actually told election judges. Change my vote. Cancel me for early voting and let me vote today. Those voters, she says, had apparently supported Democratic presidential candidates who dropped out of the race just before Super Tuesday. So they wanted what was essentially a do-over. Come on, we've heard everything. No, that can't be real. Once they cast their votes, she tells them, that's it. There's no way once, once that ballot is processed, it's processed. We cannot go back and pull it out. So many of you have been wondering, why is it that if a candidate has dropped out of the race, are they still on the ballot? Well, that's because Texas law requires that once a candidate has filed the paperwork, paid a, any fee if necessary, and has been verified by the Texas Secretary of State to appear on the ballot, they, their names cannot be removed just because they dropped out of the race. It's state law. We're live outside the Bear County Elections Office where voting continues. Jesse DeGuiado, KSAT 12 News. No do-overs. Thank you, Jesse. We're going to take a live look now at the polling site over at Lions Field, the Adult and Senior Center on Broadway. You can see the line is actually out the door right now. Our Garrett Berger talking to voters there. We're going to check in with him coming up on the news at 6. But it is great to see all the people out there voting today. And the stakes are high this Super Tuesday. Nearly a third of all pledged delegates will be awarded in today's contest. And depending on the outcome, the battle for the Democratic nomination could narrow quite a bit tonight. Nadia Romero joins us now live in Washington with the latest on that. Nadia. Well, Ursula and Steve, so much has happened since the last contest of uh, South Carolina's primary just three days ago on Saturday. Three candidates have dropped out. So let's take a look. These are the five candidates who are still in the race, who will be on those Super Tuesday ballots. And as you mentioned, a third of those delegates are still up for grabs. And that's largely because of California adding themselves to Super Tuesday. They used to be further along in the primary season. Now they're on Super Tuesday, 415 pledged delegates. And then, of course, your state has Texas, 228. So between the two of the largest state, some 600 delegates up for grabs. Super Tuesday has finally arrived, and it's already living up to its billing. Face up, face down. As voters in 14 states and one territory head to the polls, a line in the sand has been drawn within the Democratic Party. Let's bring everybody. Come on up here, guys. A flurry of last-minute endorsements for Joe Biden, including three former Democratic rivals. I'm delighted. To be casting my ballot for Joe Biden. Has this primary shaping up to be a two-man race? It looks like St. Paul is ready for a political revolution. Bernie Sanders says he's not surprised that Biden is consolidating support from what he calls the establishment. But he thinks there's plenty of room in his tent as well. To all of Amy and Pete's millions of supporters, the door is open. Come on in. But Michael Bloomberg and Elizabeth Warren are still fighting for votes. Both claim they still have a path to victory. I got in because I thought that uh, I could uh, beat Donald Trump and I thought I could do the job of being president. I'm here today because I believe in you. I believe in the America we can build together. With more than 1,300 pledged delegates at stake and only 154 awarded so far, Super Tuesday could lay the groundwork for a prolonged primary battle that may not be settled anytime soon. 
And you're taking a live look at a polling location in Missouri City, Texas. That's in the Houston area. You can see people lined up uh, wanting to be a part of this democratic process. So there they are. And now let's talk about Nashville. Here's a mega site, a polling location in Nashville, Tennessee. Remember, they had a round of storms overnight that killed 22 people. So those polling locations in that area, that those uh, sites that were affected, those folks are told come to one of these mega sites. And now they have extended polling in Nashville for two hours because of the storm. Live in Washington, D.C., I'm Nadia Romero. Steve and Ursula, back to you. Thank you, Nadia Romero. We appreciate it. Yeah, reporting live in D.C. Thank you, Nadia. A lot to watch tonight. We're going to be monitoring the election throughout the rest of the day. Tonight at 7, I'm going to have the first live results for you during an election night spreester sessions. It's live streaming. It starts at 7 o'clock tonight. You can watch it on KSAT.com or on the KSAT TV app, which can be downloaded on your streaming device. And, of course, we will have all the election results tonight in an hour-long night beat at 10. With the primary election underway, the countdown to the general election begins. And we want to help keep you informed with local and national politics. Head over to KSET.com and subscribe. We have a Vote 2020 newsletter and a new one sent out every Tuesday. Now the clouds sure held tight today. Temperature mid-70s here in San Antonio. You can see that low cloud deck that's still in place. Let's take a look at our readings across our area, according to our weather watchers in the backyard. 75 Del Rio, 70 Leon Springs and Lakey, Panama Maria and Floresville, 78 degrees. There were some peaks of sun southeast of town where it's a little bit warmer, but you know, Gary's backyard in West Kerrville. Only 68 and 71 in Canyon Lake. All right, so uneventful the rest of this evening. It's later tonight where we have the storm threat, especially between about 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. Straight line winds, the primary threat, along with hail as well. Those are both, both moderate uh, risks as we go through the night. Flooding and tornadoes on the lower end. We're going to talk more about this and time it out for you more coming right up.